So these are some of the basics, and I think uh, many of you are already familiar with this. So let's go into a couple of examples of designs. In this uh, workshop, I'm going to focus on dielectric structures, but anything I say here also applies to metallic structures. The dielectric structures tend to be more efficient for the reason that metals are inherently lossy, whereas a dielectric can be, uh, at least in theory, loss-free. People look at this in a couple of different ways. Some people consider this an effective medium where the, fill the filler material and the gap material together create a kind of uh, effective medium. Other people like to look at this as a waveguide. Still other people treat all meta atoms as kind of different resonators. These are just different viewpoints that might be useful in your design, but ultimately they reflect the same physics and a full wave solver uh, will give you the solution, no matter viewpoint uh, is your favorite. Uh, in these designs, the delta N of the, the difference between the gap and the filler material is the most uh, critical aspect. That's why in most designs, we tend to see high, uh, high end materials like silicon, silicon nitride, titanium bioxide, depending on what's still transparent in your region of interest, and a low index material for the gap, in a lot of cases, just air. And at that point, we start to build a library of structures in order to get the phase and amplitude that we want, in some cases also tuning uh, the phase dispersion, the difference in phase between across the wavelength band of our interest. Um, a lot of demonstrations use geometrical shapes like cylinders, squares, or hexagons. Sometimes it can be also uh, complex shapes that are obtained using things like genetic algorithms or joint optimization. An important requirement, uh, which I will skip over in view of time, is that the pitch should be small enough so that potentially the structures our sub diffraction, even first order of diffraction, is pushed into the evanescent region and uh, in normal cases does not carry any power anymore. To begin our designs, um, let's start with a simple example. I have here a very uh, basic system of a meta atom so a cylindrical pillar on a glass substrate. This cylinder here is silicon nitride, we placed it in a square arrangement, which can be calculated very easily with our RCW solver in just a couple of uh, minutes. And what we get out of this in typical cases is the transmitted amplitude as well as the phase. It allows us to select an, uh, a number of structures that can cover both the phase and amplitude range in order to uh, make lens. This is uh, the basic part, and now we can start expanding this further to have more and more complex structures with more and more functionality. So first example, using it for polarization management, where instead of having a symmetric structure, we use a structure that's different in the horizontal direction, in the vertical direction. This creates an effective difference in attractiveness for the two polarizations. And if we simulate that, we see that this um, the one arm actually controls the TE phase, whereas then the other arm only influences the amp. We can use this shape to control polarization in later applications. Taking this concept a bit further, we can also design half wave plates, quarter wave plates, any other kind of anisotropic component with a high level of control. So, this half wave plate example we have produced from this paper here, we're looking to convert a circularly polarized light into opposite handed circular polar light. So we optimize that parameters. we looking to have low residual polarization, maximal converted polarization. There's many different configurations that meet this requirement that give us design freedom to uh, actually use the parameters to further minimize uh, manufacture uh, optimize manufacturability and reflect and reduce reflectivity to have this highly controlled tropic surface. Famously, this idea of making half-wave plates has been taken still a bit further to make lenses using the geometric phase uh, approach, where we take these half-wave plates, we start to rotate them around, and that makes still that light left circular polarized light converted. But by the different degrees of rotation, 
converted light has different phases with respect to the other, and that allows you to give a phase profile simply that you create a lens. This gives some very nice papers, but there's actually a catch. Phase profile for the left circular polarized light and the right circular polarized light, by definition having the opposite sign. So you can make a converging lens for one okay, uh, for one polarization, but it automatically it's a diverging lens for the opposite. With this toolkit, we have a flexible way of designing any meta ad that we like, and we can use this to build libraries for complex projects. For instance, here, this example used five different structures for polarization control, generating around 60,000 structures where you see that we can basically cover any combination of phase for TE, uh, polarized light, and TM, polarized light, and select from those. 16 by 16 levels of phase control in order to recreate separate phase fronts for uh, NTM polarization. Because we picked the RCWA solver, uh, the calculations for the whole library of structures it takes around one or two days. So it's not minimal, but it's uh, still. At this point, usually somebody comes up with the idea, well, why don't we use uh, optimization? Or if you want to learn a paper, you can call it uh, machine learning. I'm not really too concerned about what you call it. Well, we uh, benchmarked that using five uh, different algorithms, optimizing the Pancharatna Perry type structure with three parameters. And indeed, you can let the optimizer run, come up with good solutions. Typically, you see here all five. Uh, algorithms, the best solutions were found with the particle swarm optimization and Bayesian optimization. And they need about 500 to 1,000 years to come up with good solutions. We now go back, you see that we had here 16 by 16 optimizations done. Uh, that would mean actually that to find this library, we'd need to run 128,000 calculations. Just select from our 60,000 structure library, it's actually faster to enforce this. Uh, so that's a, a little uh, caveat. That turns out that uh, stupid solutions uh, sometimes still work. We can also design uh, structural colors, but in view of time, we'll skip over this 